Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Alante, back with another video. I am reading The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman by Shaharazad Ali. If you always wanted to know what's in the book, but you don't want to buy it, I got you. I am reading the majority of each chapter. If you haven't checked out chapters 1 through 14, they're in a playlist attached to this video. And we are now on chapter 15. There's only three more chapters and one of them is the conclusion. And then we're done with this book. So I'm pretty excited about it. I'm excited to see you guys' thoughts on everything. Um, it's just, it's, it's been a journey, right? And I really appreciate you guys sticking with me during it and liking and giving me feedback. I've been trying to find a better setup that works for uh, this kind of video. So I appreciate you guys um, giving me feedback. All right, chapter 15, her sex. Let's dive right in. The black woman spends a great deal of her days and nights being aware of her sexuality. She throbs nearly involuntarily. She is impressed that her sex is a bona fide part of leverage she can wield against the black man to get her way. She will use her sexuality to snare a black man and will misrepresent the intensity of her sexual desire to get his attention. She is cunning and plots to get him in bed because she believes that once she has sex with a black man, it will give her certain rights in his life. Since she connects sex with love, when she deceptively persuades the black man to sleep with her, she thinks that she has convinced him to love her, or at least show a measure of love that she thinks is bonding. We're not even far into the chapter, but I think that is exactly why women are just so hurt when men cheat on them because we know how other women view sex. It's like, you gave her a piece of your love? And it's like, no, I just gave her a piece of, piece of my peen. But it's like, we don't see it that way. You gonna bond with her? Anyway, since she is such a pseudo romantic creature, she cannot be trusted in the presence of strange men for a long length of time because she is always open for a line especially if it's one telling her how beautiful or desirable she is. She believes anything a black man tells her if he looks good to her physically. She is easily flattered, but will pretend that compliments are not really important to her and have no bearing on whether or not she is attracted to a black man. Many black men she meets or sees walking down the street are envisioned as her lover. For a split second, she imagines having sex with him, considers how he might act in bed, and either lines him up for follow-up or rejects him as anything other than a friend. The black woman claims that the black man is such a dog because in her view, he will always go for the promise of sex from a woman, even if he does not know her very well. She believes he is famous for one night stands and will sneak off and have an illicit encounter and then return to her as if nothing ever happened. That's cause it be, that happens, it be happening. She hates this potential in the black man and calls him a low down hound for this kind of behavior. She sees herself as above this kind of animalistic practice. Sex means more to her than that, or so she says. The truth of the matter is that the black woman practices the exact same behavior if given the right opportunity. Mm -hmm. She will sneak around more cleverly than the black man, which is why she doesn't get busted as often. I mean, how many times have we heard women brag about how we, we do it better, we cheat better? Like, that's never been me, but... It's crazy to hear people say and be proud of it. Anyway, she may have no problem trying to have two men at the same time if she thinks her main man is fooling around with another woman behind her back. She will try to pay him back by having another man, even if she really doesn't want to. She tries to compete in this fashion, although it may turn her life into chaos, trying to live a double life because she does not have the capability to love two or more men at the same time. She certainly cannot be a woman to two men at the same time. So one of the men she is dealing with is purely for fornication purposes. She will go to bed with one man on Friday, another on Saturday, and the following Monday, or maybe even the same night, and still pretend to be outraged and shocked about the black man's deviation with another woman. Mm. That's nasty. Her double standard is built on falsehood and an image she thinks she has to preserve about the honorability of womanhood. Part of her falsehood is her belief that black men desire sex more often than she does. So she can never admit to him or herself that her own sex drive is a powerful motivating factor in her life 
and decisions as well. She brags on her sexual conquests in the same way the black man is rumored to brag about his. She will explain to her friends in great detail about her activities in bed with a black man. She especially likes to tell about the size of his penis, what he says while cop copulating, who says that? What he says while copulating, his stroke, and whether or not he performed oral sex well. They go into a minute by minute, blow by blow description about the encounter. Ladies, do not go into descriptions about your man's performance unless you want somebody else to be curious about that man. I'm only telling you this because I've been on this earth for 33 years, okay? And I've seen it. However, she only vaguely confesses her own part or tells what she did. Black women do not ask each other what they do in bed. They only discuss what he does. Another highly deceptive activity she takes part in is to have sex with a man and pretend by her sounds or words that it feels better than it does. I used to talk about this on my Instagram. If you don't follow me, follow me. Same tag as my YouTube. But I used to talk about this on my Instagram. Like, stop the fake moaning, stop the lies, because all you're doing is cheating yourself. Why not get actual pleasure? Like, why fake like you're being pleasured? It makes no sense. She won't explain to the black man what makes her feel good and may not even tell him when it's painful. She thinks it is something she has to endure. She doesn't want to hurt his feelings. She tolerates the pain without flinching, pretend to have an orgasm for fear if she tells the truth, she might lose him. However, if he does not satisfy her sexual cravings, she will seek out and receive sexual gratification with another man or woman. That's the truth. Some of them are in marriages or relationships which last several years and never reveals her dissatisfaction about their sex life. She claims that her lacking sex life is unimportant as long as he takes care of the bills, is a father to the children, and remains married or with her. She secretly hopes that one day he will figure it out on his own and do what she needs him to do. This hardly ever happens, and if it does, she becomes suspicious he learned it from another woman, in which most cases he has. Mm. She will also use sex as a weapon against the black man. It is her most useful tool, she thinks. If he angers her or displeases her, she will automatically go into sexual shutdown. It is a way to communicate her unhappiness with him. She will try to punish him by denying him sex until he submits to her idea or does what she wants him to do. She will continue this game for days or weeks when she feels it necessary to make a point or whip him into submission. She is satisfied if the black man literally comes limping back to her, crawling on his hands and knees, begging her to go to bed with him. The black man should beat her at her own game, and when she displeases him, he should deny her sex and see what happens. He will see fireworks like he never imagined. She is much more vicious when under the pressure of lack of sexual expression and is known to act like a plum fool if her bottom is not happy. The black man should remember that if he is familiar with her schedule and she's not seeing anyone on the side, she is also punishing herself when she denies him sex. Yes, girl, what are you doing? Sometimes she says no for so long that she doesn't know how to get out of it and say yes. So if he takes it, it makes it easier on her and solves her problem for how to get back in good with him. This is a very warped perception, but that's how it is. She does not mind being treated like she is the black man's property at that time. In fact, sex is the only time she succumbs to the wishes of the black man and is in submission to him. However, this kind of cooperation does not extend beyond the bedroom and her misty-eyed surrender is soon forgotten about 10 to 15 minutes after the act is over. By the time she is dressed, she is back to her old self again. It also is not always necessary for the black woman to reach a climax when she has sex with a man. What she longs for and enjoys the most is the closeness and direct attention she receives from the black man during the sex act itself. She has him all to herself and he is connected to her body for the purpose of sheer pleasure. 
She actually believes that her vagina and body is the only aspect of her being that gives her existence any real value. She is at a loss as to why the black man would desire another woman after she lets him enter her body. She has been brought up to believe and has been impressed by American culture that her vagina is the only real thing she has to offer and negotiate with throughout her entire life. When all else fails, she can offer a man her body and one of them is bound to accept it, either free or for pay. Marriage for her is an acknowledgement that she will be with one man and he will be with one woman, her. She wants some kind of legal appearing document that will give her recourse with the courts or police because she suspects one day she will possibly need their help in dealing with him. Everything she's ever heard about him points to that conclusion. While the black woman enjoys sex, she does not want to have sex with a black man 25 days a month, leaving six days for her menstrual cycle. She can keep up with this pace if the sex is a quickie, but if it consists of the in-depth type of lengthy throwdown blacks are known to share in bed, although she wants to, she can't. However, if the black man should do something or say something she does not like, she will deny him sex for that particular night at least. She will run from him, sleep with the children, stay up until he goes to sleep, pretend she's on her period or sick, or say it's too painful. She uses these as a way to manipulate the black man into not wanting to have sex with her. She also may start an argument to ensure that he will be so angry or disgusted with her that he has no desire for her. She refuses to acknowledge sex as an individual appetite akin to hunger and thirst. She wants to make it some kind of special ritual that she has power over, power to give, and power to take away. She will put on a sensational award-winning performance in bed if she's trying to impress a new man that she really wants or to get him to really want her. Sometimes all of this is done before she gets married to the man. After marriage, the meals, sexy bed clothes, rub downs, and instant sexual response may cease. She tries to make the black man think that she will always and forever cater to him and make him comfortable in and out of bed. But once she gets him, she slows down at first and then stops completely. After this point, she attempts to use her affections as a means to negotiate whatever she wants. If she gets what she wants, she will occasionally give him the attention he wants. As time goes by, it takes more and more to get her to cooperate sexually. It's almost like blackmail. Most of them want it as much as he does. Others claim it's something they tolerate just to please him. Obviously, that was not the way she started out, or the man would have never gotten with her. Ever so often, especially these days when gay liberation is prevalent, the black woman will decide due to her failed encounters with black men that she no longer wants to be a woman and instead wants to be a man. She may cut her hair short, start dressing in a masculine way, talk hard, take hormones, and grow a beard or a mustache and vie with real men for the attention and affection of women. Her idea is based on the belief that she knows how to treat a black woman better than the black man. She thinks she knows where to touch a black woman to make her feel good and how to satisfy her more proficiently than a man. She thinks that her choice is normal and that her desire to be a man and love other women is a generic fluke of nature and one that she has no control over. She thinks it's physical instead of mental. In no way will she admit that her choice is the result of her absolute frustration with the black man. While claiming to hate men, she tries her best to emulate them in every way available to her. Since she is mutually aware of the deceptions in the black woman's behavior, she has less patience than the black man when a woman starts a problem. She is quick to nip it in the bud, sometimes by physically attacking her to quench the transgression or insurrection. She is tougher on her woman because she knows since she's really just a woman herself, the secret agendas of the black woman and knows exactly what's going on and doesn't go for it. The lesbian black woman is in a double bind because she can wear men's clothes, talk like one, take steroids or hormones to resemble one and develop other masculine traits. She can never really get far from her own memories of her life as a woman. The full-blown lesbian black woman is to be pitied she represents a huge problem that ultimately the black man must confront. She is the most unhappy and frustrated of them all. She is far away from reality and transforms herself to represent what she doesn't understand, which is how to be a black man. She knows that try as she may, she does not have a penis and she will never have a real one. So her insecurity about her mate does not change. 
She must be ever watchful that a brave penis toting black man does not get close to her woman. Not a brave penis toting black man. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Black women with normal sex drives who desire and pursue men are glad that their sexual organ anatomy is designed different than the black man's because if she too had a visible penis, the black man would be quite surprised to see how often during the day she had an erection. She has the same reaction to an attractive male or list of other sexual stimulants as the black man does. And yes, she masturbates as often, if not more often than he does. Black women do not discuss how or how often they masturbate. Masturbation is something that none of them want to readily admit to. <laughs> if you're my friend, you already know how I feel about this topic. <laughs> when in pursuit of an actual one-on-one -on -one sexual encounter with a man, the black woman is very driven. She goes to great extremes, boldly and outspokenly when it comes to hooking up with the man she wants to get in bed. She will flirt and use innuendo, raunchy language, expose her body, sit with her legs open, stick her tongue out, or do anything else she thinks will get the message across. She is very adept at offering herself up for sex. Woe to the black man who refuses or deflects her sexual invitation. Her sexual program is very fragile. She will attack the man verbally, possibly publicly, tell other men and women and charge him with being a sissy. We see that all the time. Oh, you must be gay. Oh, he must be gay, like. Or he just doesn't want you. <laughs> you ever think about that? She considers a refusal for sex as the ultimate insult that is not without penalty. Not all black men go for sex thrown his way by women he is not responsible for. The black woman should be encouraged in the idea that her body will not get her everything and everyone she wants. And that's crazy because today that is all black women are encouraged to do. Like, get your body done. You can get anything you want. You can get any man you want. Get you a BBL. You can get any man you want. Like, lies. All lies. She must be taught that she has other values and that if she does not submit to being the right kind of woman, that she cannot have the sex she wants with a black man. This requires self-control on the part of the man and selection based on qualifications and not looks. She will respect him more if he behaves in such a way as to not function like all of his brains are behind his fly. He is under no obligation to prove his manhood by betting down every female who throws herself his way. He is much too precious for that. His choices must be based on much more than a brief thrill. That's so crazy because my man that I'm with now, I love him so much. Hey, hey, papa. Anyway, our first date, he said to me, We'll have sex and then what? And I was like, Oh, I like him. Oh, I like him. <laughs> He must communicate security to the black woman through touch, not always sex. Touch, caressing, stroking, and lots of hugging. To be safely encircled in the arms of a black man is a more effective way to show caring and affection than sex is. That is the truth. The black woman is sore and her wounds are tender and exposed. She longs for the healing touch of a black man to absorb his strength as a healing balm. A solve. The black man's brain, activated by electrical current, is able to transmit the power of his electricity to the black woman to increase her energy and power to function. I believe that wholeheartedly. When the black man and black woman are in love and grooving, they are able, through touch, to transfer this powerful current back and forth between them on a mental, physical, and emotional level. Ideas, sex, Feelings. The black man conceivably needs a crowbar type tactic to pry up the veneer of falsehood and insecurity the black woman uses as a shield, a wall to protect her from all the things that terrify her and all the things that cause her intense pain on the inside. But she is not immune to the unyielding determination of a black man who has accepted the task of putting the black woman back on course as his responsibility. The black man is a powerful unit of life by nature. He is forgiving and is only seeking peace. He wants to design his world to eliminate discord and disunity. He wants to design his world with his black woman and black children 
where there is no decay. He should consider his sexual organs as precious as the black woman considers hers. She will respect that, and she will make whatever changes are necessary if she understands that her cooperation will determine whether or not she continues to receive sexual gratification from her man. And that is chapter 15, her sex. What do you guys think? I mean, I we almost done with this book and I haven't felt like she's missed yet. I Some of the things I can relate to personally, some of the things I've seen uh, with women around me in my life, not in my life, uh, just women you come across, you know, women like to talk. So just women you come across on a day-by-day basis, like... This is just a gem. Wow. Anyway, chapter 16 is on the other woman. It's a lengthy chapter. No, it's not. It's 10 pages. I don't know why it feels. It feels lengthy because I don't know. Anyway, it's 10 pages. I'm going to read that tomorrow. So I didn't get my goal of being done by Black History Month, but I'm going to get into it. But let me know what you guys think about this chapter of her sex. Is she on to something? Is she hitting on all the right points? Do you think that this is all crap? Do you think this is truth? I don't know. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.